Exposure is one of those things that can get overlooked sometimes, and I'm guilty of it myself. I'm very impatient and I just want to hurry up and start filming, so stop faffing around and just press the record button and go. Because you can just look at the camera LCD screen, and if it looks alright on there, you think that'll do. But the problem is, monitors can be deceiving. And then what happens is you go to colour grade it, and all the exposure's wrong, and you can't bring the detail back. And if all the technical stuff bores you like it does me, stops, histograms, ND, EV metering, false colour, blah blah blah. I'm going to break it down and make it a little bit more manageable, so you actually have control over your settings, and you can get perfect exposure every time. Exposure refers to how much light is actually entering your camera and hitting the sensor or the film. An underexposed image looks like this, and an overexposed image looks like this. When you correctly expose your shots, you can have a better dynamic range, and you're also going to get more control when you colour grading, and in turn, a better overall image. And you know, you've just spent all this money on a fancy camera, you want to get the most out of it, don't you? Exposure, or the brightness, is measured in stops of light. So you'll be able to see if your image is under or overexposed by however many stops, and then you'll be able to compensate for that and fix it. You can actually see your exposure using the EV meter in your camera or your histogram. To be fair, I could, I could split this video into 19 million other videos. Keep burp, sorry, I keep burping. Whew. But here's an example. If your EV meter is reading that you are two stops overexposed, you know you need to take away two stops of light. And same the other way. If you are one stop underexposed, for example, you need to add one stop of light. So once we know how far under or overexposed we are, we need to know how to add or subtract light using the camera settings or any other tools. And you can do this in a number of ways. The light itself, if you actually have control over the light, for example, indoors, or using diffusion if you are outside, ISO, shutter speed, your f-stop or aperture, and ND. So as you can see at the moment, I'm currently one stop underexposed. That means I need to add one stop of light to get perfect exposure. And the first way we're going to look at doing that is by controlling the light source that we've got. So I'm using a light here at the moment. To add a stop of light, you double the brightness of the light source. So my light is currently set to 8%. I need to double that and put it at 16% to add a stop of light. Here we go. Right, so now I'm at 16% and as you can see, perfect exposure. There we go. So let's do it the other way around. If these were the camera settings that I wanted to keep, for example, ISO 800, f2.8, and then my should speed, you can see that I'm one stop overexposed. So I need to take away a stop of light. So what I need to do is half the amount of light. So I'm gonna go from 16% to 8%. Here we go. There we are, look, and that gives us perfect exposure. Ignore the flickering light. What's going on? You can also do a similar thing by moving the light closer or further away from your subject. And I haven't got much room in here, so I can't move it around too much, but watch what happens. So I'm usually around here, so I'm just slightly over the middle point. If I come closer, it's going to get brighter because the light, more light is hitting me. If I move further away, there you go, the exposure goes down. I'm going to keep these little settings on actually while I show you these tests because it's quite useful. So the next way we're going to look at is by using the ISO. Now this is very similar to when using a light source. All you need to do to add or take away stops of light is to either double the ISO or half the ISO. I'm currently on ISO 400, I'm one stop underexposed-ish and my light is at 8%. So if I can't control my light and this is all I've got to work with, bumping up the ISO is a good way of adding more light. So I'm going to, I'm, I need to double my ISO from 400 to 800 and there we go I've added one stop of light so this is great if you're in like a low lit situation you have to be careful with your ISO though because the higher you go the more grain you'll introduce and the more noise so keep it as close to the base or native ISO as possible if you've got a dual native ISO camera then you should be alright but just be mindful of that keep it as low as possible 
This camera has a native ISO of 400 and that's gonna give me the most dynamic range. So I wanna keep that ISO at 400. So I don't tend to use the ISO to adjust my exposure unless I really need to add some light if I'm indoors in a low lit situation, for example. So when you're using the aperture to adjust your exposure, it's slightly different. The aperture scale isn't as easy. So I'll leave it below here. It's kind of like the Fibonacci sequence, but not as well. But basically, every time you go up one, you double the one before the one before. <laughs> so my light is currently set to 32%. Let's say I can't control that and I don't have an ND filter, which I'll talk about in a bit. I am one stop over exposed. So I need to take away a stop of light. I'm currently at F2.8. So I just go down a step in my scale the next step is f4 so if i set my camera to f4 you can see that we've taken away a stop of light and now we are perfectly exposed right in the middle how good's that and obviously it works the other way around if i turn the light down so now my light is set at 16 percent as you can see i'm one stop underexposed so what do we need to do to add one stop of light with the aperture we go one stop across in our scale and we need to go to f2.8 there we go, we've added a stop of light. So a super handy tool to help you get perfect exposure every time is a light meter. And I've got this one here from Siconic, which they kindly sent to me. Thank you very much. But I love this thing because no matter where you are, you can use this and it's going to tell you exactly what camera settings to use to get perfect exposure. This is an incident light meter. You can tell by this little dome here. Because of that shape, it measures the shadows and the highlights. So you hold it up to your subject, click the button. It's going to tell you what settings to use. I've already programmed in my ISO and my frames per second and my shutter speed. So that tells me the aperture that I want to set it at. This is telling me to set my aperture at f2.8 to get perfect exposure, which as you can see, that's what it is. And it's perfectly bang in the middle. So I love this thing. I'm going to be doing another video on this and how to use it outside along with ND filters and how to compensate for the light whilst using an ND filter. Because one thing it doesn't do is let you add stops of ND. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So make sure you hit the bell icon and subscribe to get notified when I upload this, which won't be long. So when you're filming outside and it's a bright day, a great tool to have to help control your exposure is an ND filter, especially a variable ND. You can change how many stops of light you're letting through to your camera. So if I'm overexposed by two stops, for example, you can put an ND filter on and set it to two stops of ND and it's gonna bring your exposure down by two stops, a great tool. That means you can adjust your camera settings in order to keep the blurry background if that's what you're going for. Why would you use an ND filter if you're inside? Well, if you've got a practical light in your scene and it's too bright and you can't control the brightness of it, for example, you can put an ND filter on to bring that exposure down, then bring my key light brightness up to compensate. And that means that I don't have to stop down using my aperture and I can keep that blurry background. Now that's obviously just a creative decision and a, and a subjective taste thing. You might want all this in focus, Therefore, you can use your aperture to control that. So with all this in mind, you can now use whatever metering method you prefer to correct your exposure. So if you're two stops overexposed, you know how to bring that exposure down to the middle point. Similarly, if you're underexposed by three stops, for example, you now know how to add three stops of light. Hopefully that makes things a lot clearer because I knew all these separate things, but I couldn't quite piece them together. So hopefully this video has pieced it all together for you if you were wondering the same thing. Now, obviously there's a few things to think of because it can be very subjective. This is a creative field that we're in and it's up to you. There's things like exposing for the subject versus the background and this, that and the other. And it kind of comes down to what matters most in, in the story, what you want to highlight the most. So if it's the subject, and the background doesn't matter, then you want to expose correctly for your subject. 
But if you need to see something that's happening in the background, make sure the background is exposed. But if you've got a good starting point, perfect exposure, you can then adjust that in post in your grading workflow and you can have it however you like. If you want to see how to film outdoors in the sun, I've got a video, I'll leave a link up here and down there so that you can go and check it out. Loads of helpful tips in there to get you started. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week and I will see you in the next one. And if I've missed anything, just ask me. <laughs>